I've been spending some time playing around with Cryptic Explorers, and I say playing around because the game is not a solo game. It plays two to four, and it says two to four hours, 13 plus. It is a from Tempest Tome, and I was interested in this when I first saw it, largely because of what it looks like. And as superficial as that sounds, as I'll talk about as we get into this video, I think there's a significance here to the way this game looks. And I've talked about this in the context of a couple of other, really just two other board games that I can think of over the past years that I've done the channel, one being Dark Venture and the other being Dungeon Degenerates, that those two games and this one really stand out for their art direction and the way the art direction interacts with the overall feel of the game and the experience of playing the game. And it still surprises me that in the board game world, not the RPG world anymore, but in the board game world, there is still such an adherence to a certain style, a certain type of presentation of materials that I think really creates a box that everything lives in, even if mechanically things are so wildly different. I, I just am stumped as to why more game designers don't take a risk and step outside of that kind of fantasy look. And we all know what I'm talking about. There's a range of that type of art, but it all feels very much the same. This game does not, those other two games I mentioned do not. Now, of course, you're not just buying a game for the art. And indeed, when you open up this book in particular here, the there isn't a lot of art. However, the art goes a very long way to identifying and, and facilitating an experience with the game. But what makes this game truly unique, and here we're just gonna take a look at some of the art. It, the entire game is in black and white. And what makes this game, I think, truly unique and of interest to the soloist as well as to the solo RPGer, and I think that if you are a long time or even short time subscriber to my channel, you're probably one or both of those things. What makes this game of interest to both of, of those constituencies is the possibility in this game. This is designed as a one against many game you as the player of the many are controlling six characters, six kryptonaut characters. And here is a look at one of them. This is Hilda, the android. And I'm gonna just go through a little bit of all of them have different abilities and basically different ways of fighting the goddess, who is the one character who is sending out evildoers. So for example, if you're playing Hilda the Android, you can have your innate ability of your medical backpack, which is to basically restore health. You can do an emergency teleport, which is to move somebody, which can be very important in getting out of the way, a revitalization serum, a surgical array, which is a piercing type of damage. And there are so many different characters in this game that I'm just going to show you some of them. We have a spectrologist. And really what comes alive is not just the art, but the thematic nature of what they can do. So creating a spirit barrier, which is a um, to do damage to monsters that the goddess has summoned, repulsion fields, laying a phantom trap. This gives you a very clear sense of what this character is strong in, as opposed to this character who is an engineer, who has an innate ability to upgrade firepower for the squad that she is on. She has a ceramic suit and a piston ax and she can, and something where she can help a teammate to do some extra damage. The veteran here gives marching commands, so allowing other kryptonauts in the squad, in the group of six, to move extra. 
is a gunslinger, fire command, extra aim basically, and extra damage. Or a scout. So the scout can open doors, open and close doors without spending movement points, which typically you need to do, and they can open arcane doors. They can dodge disaster. They have an explosive scat satchel that will allow them to destroy doors, and they can dash for cover. So you can see that the they're very different characters that you can put together in this squad, and the book does give suggestions. The rule book does give suggestions for beginning squads. You're basically playing this game on one of six different areas, each of which has different values and terrain, basically, that have impact to the game. So we're looking here at the Cave of the Crystal Sultan, and it comes with its own, as they do all, in the realm book, its own setup and explanation of what is what here. And it does give the recommended Kryptonauts for playing in this world to start because of the various abilities that they have and how it interacts with the terrain. In this case, it explains what the structures are and what hazards there are and gives an objective that you need to complete as you are opposed by the goddess who is seeking to thwart you. So in and of itself, the fact of having different boards to play on, and there's even different size boards because there's a smaller double-sided board that you can play on using only four kryptonauts that's kind of intended to like test out or maybe for an early game to so that you're not having to control so many different characters. They all come with different themes, impacts, terrain, and scenarios. And of course, the goddesses are going to come with tons of different abilities as well. So this is Gorluck, Mistress of Murder. She can do some basic abilities, gore magic and lust for carnage. And she, like the others, have their own deck of cards that they run through to do different things like massacre or drink deep the chalice and have different options here as to what they are going to do. This is on some level to be expected and certainly provides a lot of variability and theme for the different scenarios and the different goddesses being very unique to play. But what makes this game stand out is not any of that. It is this. This um, when you open it up, somewhat unassuming book, even though it has this gorgeous art on the outside. This is the Otherworldly Encounters optional rules supplement for story-driven play that comes with this game. And I am not, not going to show you too much of it because I don't want to reveal what is in there, but I'm going to talk about it because it offers something that I'm not really sure what other board games have this and there probably are some that maybe I haven't played maybe I don't know if Shadows of Brimstone has that I owned that game for like a hot second and didn't like it and got rid of it um, maybe Mice and Mystics possibly um, I'm not sure maybe you can put in the comments other games that are like this it says, what is this book? It's an optional game component intended to open new possibilities for play with the basic set and the expansion what it does is it prevent, presents game events that are triggered by choices the players make or the conditions on the board, facilitating deep interaction between the game narrative and board state. Others in here are dependent on random generation by die rolls. These add an element of unpredictability to play intended to highlight how even a strategically sound mission can fall victim to the dark and unknowable horrors that happen in this game. To incorporate this, you turn to this book when you get a certain card in the game, the Knowledge of Death cards, which are part of the victory conditions of the game. You read that aloud as part of an encounter, and then you go, the person who's playing the goddess would go to the relevant section of this book, which is story-based again, or, or encounter 
scenario based, campaign based, and determine what happens. But this is a combination of things that happen based on what your kryptonaut is as well as what they do or have done. So it's not all the same. And it really enlivens the gameplay to the point where it feels like you're playing out a role-playing session. It feels like you are in a more three-dimensional world and having a more three-dimensional gaming experience than typically is felt in board games. And so for this reason, I think it is of interest to people who are interested in story-based gaming as well as role-playing gaming because it does feel like a role-playing experience with board game components. For the soloist, for the solo RPGer, if there's anyone who's a solo RPG or still watching the video, I'll say it is like a toy box, a sandbox for giving you components to use with RPG materials. The most obvious one is, you guessed it, Morkborg. You could simply take this game, this game, and play it using characters, components, and even story elements from this game. It would be just perfect. It's, I can't explain how perfect it would be. Perhaps I will do this on the channel in the future, but um, if I don't, you can do it very, very easily. Just picking up some of the characters here and making them with this rule set and taking some of the scenarios from here and playing the characters through it. it. It would work great stylistically and thematically and mechanically, you could do it. So that is, that's the obvious one and there are no doubt many others, but this is clearly to me just crying out <laughs> for that type of use for the solo RPGers. But what about the solo board gamers? Well, I think it's crying out for a automata and it feels like that should have been I don't know anything about the design of this game or the the you know fulfillment of this Kickstarter or anything or what the intentions originally were but it does feel to me like that is missing from this package because to have a document or a card that is instructions for each of the goddesses if this happens or this happens, a priority list, one could create that very easily. I'm sure that there are people on Board Game Geek who are probably doing this right now because it just it feels like it's missing and it feels very, very doable. So for soloists out there, I would say if you have game design tendencies, this would be a good thing to get your hands on to tinker with for creating a priority mode, command mode for the three goddesses that are in the base game. When I was playing around with it, I was simply attempting to do like the best possible move or the worst case possible scenario. But there are some mechanics in the game, in notably the preparation mechanic where you're getting your kryptonaut ready to do something next turn that doesn't lend itself so easily to just playing both sides. So it's, it's not it's not intended to do that way. It's a little difficult to do it that way. But I do think that somebody out there is working on this, no doubt, or you could be the one working on this to create the possibility for solo play. It's a unique look game. As I said, to me, it stands out with Dark Venture and Dungeon Degenerates as something in the board game world that is just different. And not necessarily different so much mechanically, although the addition of this narrative book, if you count that as mechanics, I think is, but something that is different in the feel. And ultimately, for me, what I like about board games is being transported to into a different feeling, whether it's this kind of feeling or a other kind of feeling. This succeeds in being a whole package, very three-dimensional, and 
very, very possible, I think, to enrich solo RPG play as well.